Good evening, good evening, and good evening. This is After Dark Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. I want to welcome those of you who are on the www. tonight. I want to thank you for joining, staying locked in with me tonight as we have conversations after dark this is big people time big people conversation and so we are here to discuss the things that we've discussed with our friend but we don't necessarily discuss with one another this is the relationship show this started eight weeks ago at the top of the lockdown designed for single people to get talking to get involved with each other and to start building relationships i want to thank you guys those of you who are just coming into the zoom room our panel we have a panel that comes into the zoom room so we're just going to give the panel a few minutes to come in and for those of you who are on facebook on facebook page i want to welcome you this evening as we get ready to kick off and talk about relationships if you listened if you were listening in last week you will know that it was very spicy last week okay so we've got some people there in the zoom evening i'll be joining in on facebook tonight okay so one of our panel members is going to be in the zoo sorry on the facebook page and we've got sheena there good evening sheena thank you for joining veronica thank you for joining i do have i know that some people have gone back to work now and so this late night thing is going to be a little bit tricky for them but nevertheless, we're going to carry on because most of us are still in lockdown. So last week, let me go, as people are coming in, let me just go over what we have been talking about over the last few weeks. We have been talking about the language of love. That's how it started. And we started off, um, there was a test uh, that we got the audience and the panel members to do uh, so to find out what is your own love language so that way you will know exactly how you like to be loved and we were saying for those who were in relationships to do the tests with those who are in uh, who they are partners with and so that they know how their partner needs can be met through this love language so we know that we initially know that there was five love languages um, and then there were six and then there were seven. So officially there are six, but last week we looked at one more. So um, those are words of affirmation. Let me write them down as I say it, right? So we got words of affirmation, we've got um, touch, we've got distance in no particular order. We've got acts of service. We've got quality time. How many have I said? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, we have, what was the last one? Distance, acts of service, quality time, touch. So, so words of affirmation. And this always gets me, I always forget which one is this, but that, well, we know that the, the last one, we know that one that was brought up last week was sex, yeah? Oh, we've got someone coming in. Yeah, we know that that it was sex was the last one. And so um, as we go through, as we go through this evening, we're going to be looking at some things. So basically last week, the question was, how important is sex to you? in your relationship so excuse me and we went around the panel and we had some feedback from those who were in the facebook room and um we came up with lots and lots of things and we realized that um 
sex was important. And we asked when was the right time as we are now adults, when is the right time to introduce that into a new relationship? Um, and we have uh, the panel members had their own kind of thoughts and some of the women were saying that from the advice that they've got from their male counterparts, their male friends, that it is better to wait um, to have sex than to, to have sex on the first um, date of a first date. The, some of the men, not all of the men were not in agreement. It's just, they were saying it's how you feel. And they felt that the, the, the whole concept of waiting or what the women were being told by other men was totally wrong but you know that's an experience that that some of us have had so we have to accept that that is the way that some men think so before I go any further ah gifts there we go thank you very much and you know what gifts is my second love language and it didn't even occur to me it, I actually didn't I wasn't really liking that, the fact that my love, my love language, my second love language was gifts. That was a real surprise to me. The first one was um, acts of service, which was of no surprise to me. I knew that 100% um, because I know how I stay. But gifts was, ooh, I was a bit taken back with that, but never mind. We're moving on, we're moving, we're moving on. So guys, I just wanna welcome you, all those of you who are joining on Facebook, good evening, this evening. And those who are in the Zoom room, our panel's looking kind of meat tonight. I don't know what's going on. But you know what I have said, the Zoom room is closing at 10 30. So if there is anyone that is on our Facebook live who wants to come into the Zoom room, then let me know and I will put the link in the thread. I'll put it in the comments. Let me know if you want to come in. Yes, um, Ibe is saying um, affirmation. Yeah, we said words. Words of affirmation was the first one. Words of affirmation, um, touch, distance, acts of service, quality time, gifts. Um, those were the six. Uh, and those are the six official ones. But we have a, last week, we discovered that there was another one that should be brought into the into the mix. And it was sex. And it was two men, two men who had um, spoken about this originally and as a matter of fact that's how this all came about how this conversation came about um was how important is sex to you and the person said um the first three things sorry no the, what were the three main things um in a relationship and they said communication trust honest trust and honesty is one thing and good sex and so um after some questions and some probing uh, it came out that what he meant by good sex was intimacy, into me see. Okay, so last week we looked at how important is sex to you. Um, and it's very funny that this week, uh, moving on from there in terms of sex, the question was, how do you handle conflict? Now we are talking about, right, we are talking about how we move on, how we actually become partners now we are looking for love actively looking for love some of us we've given up on the um old date insight malarkey and we are now looking for men we are looking for men to join the conversation with the hope that some of us will might get on and it might evolve from there we're doing it differently why because if you do the same thing and you and you expect a different result this is what is known as insanity, right? If you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, exactly the same way, and you expect a different result, you are nuts because it's not going to change. What we have to do is create a slight change to create what we want. So with that being said, Oh, somebody putting in the love room link for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it is good to have some help here tonight. So those of you who want to get into the Zoom room, the link has been put in the comments on Facebook. 
jump in. You have like 14 minutes left because after half past, I'm not going to let anybody else in so that we can concentrate and focus on the show. So I'm just going to go to, I'm going to go to Tisha because I know that Tisha was in Facebook last week and I just want to find out how she felt last week was, did she learn anything and how this has been going because Tisha's been here for a few good weeks now. So how it's been going. So I'm going to bring Tisha in. And hi, Tisha, how are you this evening? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Um, yeah, last week was fire, as she said. <laughs> I was, uh, I, um, yeah, there were, I was really interacting on the Facebook. There were a few of those uh, R emojis and yeah, the uh, heart one. So yeah, it was really, really good. And yeah, I did learn a lot actually um, with regards to intimacy. Um, and some of the panelists um, and yourself mentioned about intimacy. I think some of the male ones um, spoke about it. And I realized on my dating path, I'm trying to date at the moment, doing online dating, um, that I am find I found one particular guy, his intimacy was completely different to mine. Um, yeah, he just it seemed that he just wanted to jump straight in there and I don't, yeah, I'm not down with that. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, and again, you mentioned about if you do the same thing, um, yeah, it's madness, isn't it? So I've got to learn to cut those sorts of people off. Don't try and give them a second chance or whatever. So, yeah, I just locked off a few people last week, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so you really got into your power and just said, yeah, I'm not you off enough is enough. Yeah, I'm not into that, yeah. But um, yeah, and I wrote last week, I think, um, yeah, I think, uh, well, the type, type of guys I seem to attract, they want, yeah, they think intimacy or having sex, um, if you like, is just uh, another act, same like kissing or something like that. And for mm. me, it's not, it's not like that. So um, yeah, I think I just need to put down straight away what my intentions are, mm. if they don't like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was really interesting. Bye -bye. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah, so yeah, I'm learning a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Good. I'm glad that you're learning. I'm glad that you experienced last week. I think tonight might be a little bit calmer. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows how it will go tonight? But yeah, the last two weeks have been absolute fire <laughs> on this thread. So we are um, now. I'm, I'm hoping that it'll be a little bit calmer tonight um, and we really want to deep dive into, um, you know, so a little bit more, but we want to deep dive more into sex tonight. That's what we're going to be talking about because we know from last week that men are very much different in their mindset than women are. And I'm just hoping that we get some men tonight because it looks like we are absolutely bombarded with women tonight, which is fine, which is fine. Um, but, uh, uh, but we are going to deep dive into the differences that we experience um, when having sex and why, and why, why the differences are so much. And I think that once we explore that, it will clear some things up with us especially the women it will clear things up and, and we'll understand why our mindsets are so different but i'm also hoping that there will be some men i do know that and um, one of our panel members kelly on has said he's only just got in from work he's quite tired so he's going to see how it goes that was about an hour ago so he's going to see how it goes um but we are going to talk openly and frankly about it and those of you Guys, if you are um, in the Facebook thread and um, you have something to say, do make sure that you put your comments and also just add a little bit of conversation in your comments so that we know what you're referring to. Because I have to let you know that there is a delay. So you, you, those of you who are on Facebook are slightly delayed um, from us who are on 
Zoom. And I do believe those who are on the WW dot are also delayed as well. So we do need to take time. Those of you who are on the WW dot, I'm welcoming you this evening to After Dark Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. And it is um, an, it is an adult show very much it's an adult show tonight and if you have a comment you can you can whatsapp actually it might be easier to whatsapp rather than to to um text or or email the whatsapp number is 07957255670 that's 07957255670 six seven zero and I will read that number out again for you as we go on in the show so I want to thank teacher for just popping in and letting me know how she felt about last week's show and um I'm just going to pop over to Veronica quickly um and and see how and see how she felt about last week's show all right my darlings Let's go over here. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Veronica. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Good, I'm good, okay. Good. I'm good. Good, good, good. Oh, we've got an all-female panel tonight. Okay. So as, as from the perspective, because let me just tell the listeners, <coughs> excuse me. Veronica is one of our married panelists. Now we want to create a balance here. So we do have some, um, not many who are married just to give a bit of balance and to give their perspective of their dating and their relationship. And so um, Veronica is here and has been here a few weeks now. So Veronica, just out of interest, how have you found the show so far? To be honest with you, I'm, um, that gentleman, Mr. P, I learn a lot. That's the honest truth because I'm I'm married, yes, but I'm still I'm still open up to learning stuff and listening to that experienced gentleman sp speaking and stuff, and even to other guys to the other panel that speak and thing. I'm still learning stuff from from them also too. So, but it's vice versa. I'm married. Yes, I could get some information from my own perspective, and there I'm learning from their perspective how I could even do things now in my marriage. So it works both ways at the end of the day. That's amazing. Did it? I hope you guys, those of you who are at home and are married, I just love you, Veronica, because what Veronica's basically saying, even as, oh, oh no, not tonight. Sorry, guys. Sorry. We're going to get some sneezing tonight. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think the pollen is out. So I'm hoping that that was the only one. But as Veronica was saying, that she has learned a lot um, from coming on these sessions. In spite of being married, she's still learning a lot. So guys, don't think that this is just for singles. This is for everybody. This is about us learning how to communicate at a higher higher level and I'm, I'm going to pose a question because I was sent a question um, last week actually because from doing the the program the love zone um, a lot of people started sending in their dilemmas and one of the questions was how do you manage in an argument how do you kind of get the balance when you when you're struggling to get on and I think we're going to um have a a moment where we kind of look at that as well tonight because we might as well all right so guys are looking at me like oh gosh oh gosh yeah because if you've been watching if you've been watching this and you've been with us for the eight weeks you will know why it's been very 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 spicy personalities and uh, you know how we function how we communicate is so important and as the host it's also very important 
Right, so good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Now, Mr. P, everyone's saying, where's Mr. P, where's Mr. P, where's Mr. P? Now, I do believe, I'm not sure, but Mr. P did say last week that he may be returning back to work. And so um, I haven't heard from him and I don't see him. So we're just going to have to take it. He might come in. He might not, he's got four minutes, but I think he's the only one that I would kind of like let in. Anyway, so we're going to go on with the show. We're going to go on, we're going to move on with the show this evening. So last week we looked at how important is sex to you? And this week, you know, um, and it comes in with the same thing. How do you handle conflict? And this is one of the questions that was has been sent in, um, how to be, handle conflict. And the other person who sent me the message um, before on Instagram had said, how do you navigate yourself in an argument um, with the person that you are with? So we can kind of amalgamize the two in one. And then we, there is another question we didn't we only got through one question last week in two hours and so i'm hoping that we can get to do three and then we can move on so guys um in i'm gonna come to i'm gonna go to 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 shalomi are we ready can i come to you my darling so shalomi we've got one two we've got five people in the the as a panel, it's all female. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to put a prerequisite out. If a male does come in the Zoom room uh, to come in, I will let him in. Only because there's so many females in there and I want to get more of a balance. All right. So, um, good evening, Tony Brown, who's watching. Let me just say good evening to everybody who's logged in. We've got... We've got 18, 19 people in, the, in, in Facebook right now. All right, so I'm going to come to Shalomi. Hello, my darling, how are you? Hello, Yvonne, I'm great, thanks. You're looking very lovely, I must say. Thank you. Yes, the Thank women you. are really making an effort tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the question? So we were looking at last week, we were looking at how important is sex to you, but what the question was, has come up about how we handle conflict. So as much as we're getting on, there are times when we don't get on. And so in that, um, two people have, have, have messaged in to find out how do we um, handle handle conflict so we're all looking to start relationships so conflict is going to come arguments are going to come how do we start to now navigate ourselves around that and i just want to know what you know how you would handle it and then we'll go around and then we'll we'll get some input from everybody else um well first of all with conflict you have to know the person and always use kind words never use um, words that you regret because words are powerful words are very powerful and words linger even when the argument is finished and words can linger for years so first of all is knowing the person be respectful whenever speaking to no matter how um, upset one get always remain respectful to the other person be kind with words you're gonna scream you're gonna shout but at the end of the day the main thing for me is being kind because you can get upset and still be respectable and kind to the person. And um, then sex. Sex is up to an individual because um, people with sex, it's, it's different. Some people, sex mean nothing, like nothing. You meet somebody and sex. Most Caribbean men think sex is proving that you're in a relationship with them or you love them. That's the idea of proving your love to them is by having sex with them, right? And sex can be a thing with no meaning, no feelings, nothing. So it's all depending on the individual and what the person is after. Because so, because for me, it's connection with a person and then getting to trust the person. And then another kind of connection, that's an emotional connection again. And then after that intimacy, after the intimacy marriage, then sex, that's my 
line out and there is no compromising in that for me. So everyone have to have their idea and a standard, set a standard for yourself. Are you willing to compromise? Because as I said, sex is not, after being out of 40 years, we have so much sex. Oh gosh, we have had sex and we know what sex is like, right? But sex doesn't prove that you love someone. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Minute. Those of you who are on the WW, we're just going to go to a quick break, but we will be back right after this. We're going to carry on with the conversation. We'll be right back. Yeah, sex does not. And we are grown women, so we know. This is not, we are not children no more. We are not teenagers. To prove that we love somebody with sex, that's for teenagers, that's for young people. You can't prove that you love somebody because you have sex with them. And a guy have sex with you means nothing, right? A sex prostitute would not be in business. Yeah, and Carol, I think, say something the other day um, about knowing preference. I'm from Jamaica. We are straight sex, right? We don't go through the back door. We don't go through the side door. Your mouth is for eating food. So different culture. You have to know likes and dislikes because for me, the back door is forbidden. I ain't going through nobody back door. You ain't coming through mine. You understand? So things to talk about. And when you talk about sex, people are afraid to talk about sex. Mm -hmm. Those weird people that their sexual desire come into this country I realize oh my days they are different sex they are anal sex I didn't know even anal sex was sex coming from Jamaica I didn't know that it was sex and I'm being honest right because in Jamaica it's forbidden forbidden fruit don't go there yeah oral sex in Jamaica again oral sex you can't eat out of nobody plate you can't drink out of nobody cup you understand? So you come and you learn different things. So speaking about sex, it's important because Carol said men love people going through the back door. Like, I'm um, like, so you learn. Sex is to be talked about, but having sex with people don't prove that they're into you, you're in a relationship, or you love them. So that's how I look at it. Thank you so much for your honesty um, there, um, Shalomi. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I started laughing because you, you, you just tell it as it is. You just tell it. You're not nobody going through your back door. You're not going to nobody back door. And the malt is for eating alone. Yes. You, yes, my sister, you've made your, your point. And, you know, it's funny how I think this conversation tonight is going to be really quite interesting because we have so much feminine energy here tonight at the moment there's lots and lots of women on here and so we are it's gonna be funny tonight anyway so so Shalomi is saying that you know she's looking for because things have been said and something that was said last week on the show um a lady one of our um panelists had said that she was told that she should withhold um herself from having sex with somebody um, for a while because most men find that if they are looking for somebody that's wife material or they're looking at somebody like that it's more likely that they would choose somebody that will hold themselves before having that kind of intimate relationship and so the guys on the panel were like saying no 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 but this is what um we discovered um last week so if you are listening if you're on the ww and you're just coming back in from the break we are we are talking we are asking if you are male if you are male we are asking you the question do you prefer the woman that you are going to spend the rest of your life with to withhold sex for a longer period of time, or does it make no difference? You can have sex on the first night and it's all good. I want you to be honest. You know, we don't know you, we don't know what you're gonna say. You know, there's no judgments here. We just wanna know what you think. So, yes, so, okay. So Shalomi is saying that is this um, intimacy, then marriage, 
then sex, yeah? So connection, emotional connection, emotional intimacy, marriage, then sex, and it's that order for you. Thank you so much, Shalomi, for your, your honesty. And let me just ask you, in terms of, in terms of how you get on with that person, if there was, so say for instance, hypothetically you're with somebody you've met somebody you like the person and you've got the connection you've got the emotional in, uh, intimacy you haven't got to the marriage yet you're not married but you're you're dating you're courting you're spending time together and then there's an argument how do you handle that argument oh you said kind uh, words didn't you um as i said arguments because it depending on how a person look at stuff right so what caused the argument? And sometimes you just walk away. I'm seeing my grandparents, you know, the older ones, like my grandfather, my grandmother is always right. And he's always like, sorry. And, and you ask him, why do you say sorry? He goes, because she thinks I'm wrong. I accept that I'm wrong. We live happily ever after. So he's knowing the person and find why the argument starts in the first place. Right, it's not about right, it's not about wrong, it's not about winning. You understand? It's about coming to a conclusion to say you're hurt by I may not feel what I said was wrong, but the fact that you are hurt, right? I am going to apologize because you are hurt, right? So sometimes it's not to say that my point, I don't have my point about why we're having a, a argument, but it's not about the arguments, it's about the person's feelings. So the fact that you're upset for what causing the argument and I'm a cause of it. So I will apologize because what I've done or what I've said, I've upset you. So sometimes it's just agreeing to disagree, right? And, and for me, when it comes to argument, it's like I've reached this point in life. You realize some arguments aren't worth it. Sometimes it's about Caribbean woman, we have a mouth on us, right? And we don't, we don't like to be wrong. Even when we're wrong, we don't like to be wrong. We like to be in the right. So it's accepting. It's hard because we are used to it. We are used to having the power. We are used to looking after ourselves. We're used to doing things. So to get someone to tell us what to do, it's like they have to find a way to ask us. We don't like to be told what to do. Yeah, we like suggestion. We like to be asked, but not to be told. And that is where a lot of man goes wrong because they try to tell us what to do and we don't like it. So as I said, with arguments is get into the root of the argument, being kind to each other, use kind words and solve it as quick as possible. Because if it's not solved, feelings start to develop. A day go by and then it gets a just a little dot goes into a big thing. So I realized not only with relationship, with friendship, with children, with everything, if you don't solve things immediately, sometimes it's too late, right? So it's just getting to the road, knowing what, it's not about right or wrong, it's agreeing to disagreeing and that's it. Okay, thank you Shalomi. Thank you for that. I, I, I'm interested in what you said about um, the, the, the difference between being asked and told, but we're gonna come back to that, um, saying that women do not like to be told, but they like to be asked. And I, I, I just wanna kind of expand on that in terms of how, oh my God, these two, look. There we go. Only here do you get to, you're not staying in here. Right, there you go. And here's the calm again. <laughs> Sorry guys, I think I just forgot myself. <laughs> okay, so the windows are open, the lights are on. So the beasties are flying in. <laughs> the thing was like it was gonna attack me. So it was either me or it, and it lost. Okay. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's say in <laughs> murder. <laughs> That's what we're getting on the feed. But anyway, let's move on. Right, so guys, um, Cheryl, can I come in to you? Hi, good evening, everyone. Hi. Good evening. How are you, my darling? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not looking as glamorous as everybody else, man. I'm mash up Marcy today. 
<laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> oh Lord. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> So, right, so what, what specific point are we talking about, sweetie? Sorry, I've got distracted with you mashing up the flies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about the arguments um, and resolving conflict. Um, like Shalomi said, I think you have to know the person because there, there's so many people that hold on to arguments mm -hmm. and, and will sulk. I can't, I can't bear it when people sulk and they carry it on for me. I, 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 I agree that there are times that you have to accept, you have to agree to disagree. And, and you get to a certain point in age, like Shalomi said, where you, you realize that some things are really not worth arguing about. And you've got to hope that the person that, um, that you're having this discussion with um, feels the same way. Because things can just escalate and escalate, and sometimes I think you get to the point where you don't even realise what you're arguing about. You can't remember. Um, so it, it is about knowing the person, knowing um, that everybody wants to be heard, and that's the important thing: is that the other person needs to feel that they're heard. My, my thing is, once we've had an argument, I want it done. It's over. Let's move on. I don't want to be talking about it for a week. It. it that's not my personality, because all that, that that in itself just brings on another argument. All right, we've had the argument, we've agreed to disagree, let's move on. So that's important. You're muted, Yvonne. Sorry. Do you find, uh, just just in case I started screaming, so, um, so do you, have you found, I'll ask this question, I'm going to ask everyone, that do you find that the men that you've come into contact with mm. are more inclined to argue mm. that you sort out and and how and if so, how was the conflict sorted? Well, I, I have to say that I was very lucky because my my husband had reached that point in the world where he, he realized that certain things weren't worth arguing about, and the most part was for us was that we, we used to end up laughing about it because it was we realized it was ridiculous <laughs> you know because life is short but i have had relationships where people sulk if i don't agree and um you know i'm very much a caribbean woman i, I know my own mind and and if we have an argument and you just i will agree to disagree i won't agree if i don't agree with it but i will agree to disagree and i accept that people have different um different opinions about different things mm. yeah so for me I, I really don't feel comfortable arguing and arguing and, and holding budget it, it's just for me a waste of time and a waste of energy and I find myself pulling away from people who are very argumentative I, I don't it, it's too energy sapping for me we're at, right. sorry I need to close the window guys to work for me. <laughs> I am being in on all these beasties. Get out. Yeah, you well, there's, there's also the correlation that there are people that enjoy arguing and they love angry sex. And, and I know people that love that. Go back. What did you just say about? Did I hear you say angry sex? Yes, yeah, some. There are some people, men and women, that enjoy that angry makeup sex that goes with an argument. So, you know, it, it, it's different strokes for different folks. I see. Mm. Okay. This is, so this is even broadening out mm. the conversation a little bit more because this is not something that was, has been brought up. Mm. We have been talking about um, intimacy and as Shalomi was talking about sex um, after marriage um, and she even went into the areas of there are some people that want this, 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 and yeah. having that. And so these things have to be discussed before mm. the marriage, mm. I would say. And I think that there are some times where these things are not, mm. this are not discussed. Correct. How, how comfortable are you going to be um, discussing um, anal sex? How comfortable are you going to to be 
um, discussing oral sex? How comfortable are you going to, to be about having angry sex? Mm. If one's angry and one isn't angry, then how do you navigate through that? How, mm. you know, how do you, that's something that needs to be explored before the marriage. Mm. We know that divorce rates are up. Um, we know that people are struggling now during this lockdown period because now people, even though they are couples, have been thrown together in a way that they're not used to. Sometimes they're both working and they're out all day. They don't see each other all day. And sometimes one comes in from work. The other one is still at work and the one goes to bed and the other one comes in when the other one's sleeping. Or sometimes they work different shifts one works a night shift, one works a day shift. So they're like passing ships in the night and at weekends or the odd day, they get to interact. And that's the way that their relationship functions. Now, we've been thrown in the deep end and we know, I know, from phone calls and emails that there are people who are struggling in their relationships because they're spending so much time together. So what you're saying is very, very interesting. On the on the um, Facebook, we've got makeup sex. Hmm, okay. So, you know, do we like that ladies are, oh, you know, cause I have to say, I, I don't see, oh, there's a, is there any men on here tonight? Guys, if you are, if you, men, if you are here, oh, there's, I've seen one, I don't, but he's not saying anything. If you are a man and you are on this uh, call, if you are on this conversation, whether you are married or not, we want to hear from you. We want you to tell us how men are because we've got these single women here and most of us here are single and we want to know how to, how, how, we, how we can support you, be with you, and, and move on in a relationship. Right, so we've got here, um, Ruth Carter say, reference to what Cheryl said, angry sex shouldn't be, shouldn't it be forgiving sex, especially after an argument or conflict? That's a thought. That is a thought. Shouldn't it be forgiving sex? There's a question. Let me know, guys, what you think. When you come in and you speak, we want to know what you think about that. Rather than angry sex, we're having forgiving sex. Does that make it sound any better? Tisha's nodding her head like, mm, no. <laughs> you can come in. Yeah, I can't think of anything worse than actually laying down with someone I'm upset with. Because for me, sex is about connection. It's making love. I would never lay down with someone who I'm upset with. So after it's all calmed down, yeah, we can have makeup sex, yeah. Not right, once it's calmed down. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere near someone who I'm upset with. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so... I get the wrong idea that it's, it's over. <laughs> yeah, I might get the wrong idea that the argument's over. Yeah, if it's not resolved, sex is not going to heal it, is it? Right. So the res so it has to be resolved, right? And I've got a lot of nodding going on. Does it have those of you in Facebook? Does it have to be resolved? Put it on the thread. What you think right now? I want to see your answers. Do you think it needs to be resolved first, or can you resolve it during? I'm just asking. I'm just here to ask the questions, guys. But you know, I, I do think there's a difference between makeup and angry sex, because I think um, for, for some people, and it tends to be men, that the, the angry sex is about the power over their power. Mm. You, you, you know, to, to reassert a power that mm. perhaps you might have been losing the other. But, and there are some people, and there may be no one on this panel that agrees, but there are some who like that. 
Okay, thank you for that, Cheryl. We've got some people coming in. Yeah, it needs to be resolved. It needs to be resolved. It needs to be resolved. These are, are I would love to find out what the men are saying. I do believe that uh, Mr. P would say resolved. I, I know that. But he said he, him and his wife don't really argue anyway. They have conversations. So it should be resolved. Simone Gordon is saying it should be resolved before you go to bed do we agree with this and how many of us are really honest enough to say that every argument that we've had it happens and we then um resolve it before we go to sleep because i can just say to you right now i know in my past i'm going to sleep i like to think that and sometimes it ha was like that but not all the time because when i'm vexed i'm vexed does that make sense? So I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest tonight. Okay, so, um, right, so we're getting resolve, resolve, resolve. Right, so then we have a question from, from Ruth. <laughs> Are you talking about BDSM then? Mm, do we know what that is, guys? <laughs> And we got shoulders are like up. Oh. Veronica, do you know what that is? <laughs> no, I was saying she said that that message it, that that question is for Cheryl. If you really had a part of it, so that <laughs> message that that question was for Cheryl. Oh, that she and she's had she has said it. That is to Cheryl. <laughs> I, I don't want it. I'm like bye <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay. Ruth, I don't want you to think that that's what I'm into. <laughs> she said, I think Cheryl is linking angry sex to BDSM and that's a completely different genre. Is it, Ruth? <laughs> it is, actually. It is. <laughs> it, um, do we know um, what Tell me do more. <laughs> do, we, do we know what that is, guys? Do we want a brief explanation of what that is? I think you better break it down, Yvonne. Right. Okay, so BDSM is um, you is it's like a fetish. So there are people who are submissive, who like to be banked and told off and held accountable and tied up and stuff. That's the easiest way for me to explain mm. it. And so they will do things to get their dominant angry-ish and then the, ang then the dominant will spank them and then that's, yeah, that's how they, they enjoy their sex life. Yeah. No, 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 that's not what I was referring to, Ruth, but thank you <laughs> for the question. No. Yeah, <laughs> now Lorraine Rollins is saying 50 Shades of Grey type thing, yes. Yeah. Yes, it is a Fifty Shades of Grey type thing. So those of you who don't know what we're talking about, just if you haven't seen the film, it, it actually isn't really, um, it gives a perception, but it's it's not. Anyway, so, okay, so we've got, we've got lots of people watching and we are asking the men, especially today, because we are thin off the ground today for men. This is, you know, there's lots and lots of women here who want some men to come on. So if you are a man and you are bold enough, to come and talk openly from a male perspective it's not necessarily from your own perspective but from how men think you know you you're in the barbershop you listen you hear then we are inviting you in to the zoom room um so let us know if if you would like to come in right so okay so the question is it is about um, we, we've touched on angry sex, actually. We've talked about intimacy, sex, um, and, and marriage, um, and the different, oh, the question here, and there was a question um, here that says, um, is there a difference between being asked or told? Right, being asked or told as women. Oh, Veronica saying, what is BDSM? BDSM is a term used. Oh, thank you, Veronica. She's put it in the thread of what BDSM is. Okay. Uh, it means that you, you're a freak. That's different to angry sex after an argument. <laughs> 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 
Oh, oh, dear, that's Simone Gordon makes me laugh. Okay, just <laughs> you're a freak. But is there anything wrong with being a freak? Now, what my thing is, these things need to be discussed before a relationship, the intimacy of a relationship. And this is why, for me personally, I'm going to say that it's always better to wait so that you can have these kinds of conversations. Imagine if you didn't. And you and, and and you know, Mr. Man is a freaky man because we're all mo mostly mostly women here. Mr. Man is freaky and he puts it on you. How are you going to feel? So this is why it's really really important, especially especially for us now at this age. I'm not saying that to be prudish. I'm not saying, but it's good to ask questions. It really is good to ask questions. So I'm going to come in, Lorraine, Carol, Lorraine. I'm going to come in and ask you. So once you get yourself ready, I'm gonna say, right. So Sheena Campbell saying very well, I watched, I expected more. Are we talking about 50 Shades of Grey here, Sheena? <laughs> he expected more. It's TV, you're not gonna get more. <laughs> okay, so Ruth Carter saying then, angry sex would be walking on ice, in my opinion, and both parties should be consensual to that type of sex. Absolutely, and this is why I'm saying, that we should, must have these conversations because everybody's got a different way of doing their thing. Everybody does their thing a little bit different. So it is good to have that communication and talk and talk. Okay, so you guys in the, in the Facebook thread, you are making me laugh. Those of you who are on the www. we are gonna go to a break in about three minutes. And so if you do have a call, if you have a question, should I say, I am saying you can WhatsApp 07 957 255 670 with your questions. That's 07 957 255 670. And we are gonna con we're going to continue with the conversation. So, Carol Lorraine, I'm going to bring you in. Hello, my darling. Good evening. Good evening, ladies. Oh, they can't. They can't respond, but they can wait because <laughs> they're all on mute. So, okay. So, what we were talking about um, a little bit earlier on, the question was. Um, as we have been talking about this over a period of weeks, uh, we had started to talk about sex and how important sex is in a relationship. And we were like trying to, two questions that have been asked me this week was about how we manage conflict um, in a relationship. That was one of the questions that was asked. And, um, and then we were kind of trying to, you know, elaborate on how the relationship would be. Um, I don't know if you was here when Shalomi was talking and she was saying, you know, she would deal with it with kind words. Um, and, you know, you, sometimes you think you're in a relationship, but you're not. So that has to be proven that the relationship is a relationship um, and that there's connection, emotional intimacy. And for her, then marriage would come and that's when sex would come. And the, the last part of it is, is how would you manage a conflict in and around that so it's quite a lot to unpack there's quite a lot there so just give us the first part in terms of you know how you feel because remember we were here last week how you feel about having intimacy in your relationship or sex should i say early in the relationship um I, hmm. that is this is it's a bit of a um catch-22 situation really or question because it it all depends on the person you're with I think um how you vibe with that person how you get on with that person person me personally I I like to have a bond with that person and have a friendship friendship with that person anyway but you can get to know someone very quickly about, and, and their quirks um how they are, um, how they flow, um, and stuff like that. 
um, quite quickly. It just depends on if they're willing to give that information quickly, you know, or um, fluidly, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're fluid with conversation, you, you learn a lot body language and stuff like that. So um, I think that depends, but I would like to make have a bond first before that actually happens. Okay. Um, as for dealing with an argument and that, as Shalomi has said, um, and even show, I, I, I don't particularly like, I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, I like to argue, but if I feel I'm, I've, I've got something to say, I'll say it, but I don't want to say it in an angry way. I would like, like I'll pro my mum always said to me, and it works as well, do not shout or scream if you're having an argument, it doesn't work. Sit down and calmly talk to that person. And I found a few times when I needed to talk to somebody, um, especially a man, uh, you know, in a relationship, it was easier to sit, sit and calmly talk to them. And then they look at you as if to say, well, we're actually serious, you know what I mean? And, you know, they're understanding what you're saying and then know what you're saying that is what you mean, you know, taking you even more seriously. Being angry and shouting that does not go get you anywhere. You know, you're just storming out the house or you're storming somewhere else in the in the house or something like that. It does not get you anywhere. So having a calm conversation about it or whatever the problem is, is better than shouting and screaming at each other, I think. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And then, then you can have to make up sex afterwards. That always works. <laughs> You can have the makeup sex <laughs> after. So, are you having the makeup sex after the anger's died or after you've resolved it? Because there's two different things. After is both. After, because, all right, not, not everything can be resolved straight away. You know, it depends on what it is. You know, um, but once I, I think that you, you either have resolved it or, or you have, and your anger has died down because you're calmer then, mm -hmm. you know, then you can go do what you want to do, you know? I'm going to throw a question out there because it, it just came to my mind just oh. now to be shum like this. Do you think, and don't answer all at once, that sometimes the reason for arguments is because of sexual frustration. Carol's nodding her head. Yes. Could, could be. Yes. Guys on the thread, let me know. Do you think that sometimes, not all the time, not yes. all, but sometimes when there is argument that seems to be a little bit nonsensical, could that be because there is sexual frustration? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a yes from Cheryl, a yeah. yes from Lorraine. Tisha, you've got your hand on your chin. She's like, that come to me. Veronica, what are you saying? No, I was laughing. I, let, I was laughing, but there's somebody on the feed that was saying, uh, Diane, she said, I like to know it the really fit very early on in the relationship because if we don't fit physically it would be a major problem for me <laughs> that was one of that way <laughs> well diane's been honest she's been honest <laughs> come on ladies what we're talking what we, are we are we in agreement mm -hmm. this is diane she, i'd like to know that the willy fits <laughs> very early in the relationship <laughs> Because if it don't fit, it would be a major problem. Okay, so th that does that mean it could be either too big or too small? Just I'm just asking. I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, sometimes either. Or dead. Or dead. Mm-hmm. Or dead. Or dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it is, right? <laughs> yeah, we sometimes need it at different frequency. Yeah, uh, we've got Barbara saying, yes, I think at times that's true. Is it that's true that we need to, to, to measure the size of the, the penis or is it true that we uh, argue? <laughs> Can we just get some clarification because of frustration? Because it's, and I don't know where that come from, but it just came as a download. Could that be? Ladies, we need to be honest. We need to be honest because we're going to go and meet these men and we're going to form relationships and then we're going to come up on these things and then we're going to not, we're not going to know what to do. And sometimes I'm going to just say this in, oh, in, in, in our defense, and that's between male and female, this is the whole, the whole lot. Sometimes we don't even know that we are sexually frustrated. Do we, do I get an amen there? Does anybody agree with me that sometimes you don't even know that you're sexually frustrated? One hand up. Teacher's just looking at me like, ah, I'm <laughs> chatting about. <laughs> just say no. Come on, what are you saying? Oh. For me, it's personally, it probably wouldn't be um, sexually frustrated. It probably means I need intimacy. I need a cuddle or, yeah, it might be an argument and you just want it resolved because you want to be heard. Mm. Not so much, yeah, you want sex. For me, it would be, yeah, a cuddle or just yeah. there. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me pose the question again because it's to start the argument. Did, are you starting an argument? because you are frustrated mm. or not getting the level of um um what's the word i'm looking for the the level of attention maybe that yeah. you might require yeah so uh, you yeah, know maybe a level of, yeah so yeah i could i could see myself starting um an argument maybe because yeah i feel a bit I want a bit of love, really. That might come out in frustration and that might trigger the other person and then you end up having an argument. But ultimately, if that happened, the end goal would, would be for a connection there, like to be reassurance that everything's okay. So, yeah. See, see, yeah, see, we're coming on. Look, all right, so we're getting some men now. You see how you men look like for common laity? <laughs> Listen, guys, we have got some space in the Zoom room. Um, and we are down on the men tonight. So I am going to open up the Zoom room. Um, if you would come in. I know I can see Herbie and I can see Desmond here um, on the thread. So if you don't mind, please come in and, and just have a general chit chat with us. We're not, it's not personal. It's just a chit chat. So Diane is saying she might be a bit grumpy and Lyndon's here as well. Lyndon, what are you doing? Come on. What are you doing, man? So I want to welcome everybody that's listening right now. What's who's listening right now? And what we are talking about, we are talking about how we interact in our relationships. A lot of us here are single. But there are some who are in relationships. There are some who are married. And I just posed the question. I just posed the question because we were talking about, you know, angry sex has come up, resolving issues has come up, and then having sex has come up. Um, but my thought was, what if, um, or is it possible that an argument can be caused because of sexual frustration? And so, I'm looking at us now and I'm not saying that we are all not having sex or we all are having sex. Um, and um, oh, what, something what's just come come to mind, it probably is taking the, um, the conversation elsewhere, but as you were saying that, I used to have an ex what used to cause arguments so we would break up and then he could go uh, yeah elsewhere so it might be sexual um frustration yeah hold on, so hold on say that again you had an ex yes um, break up with you yeah and then disappear for yeah, a couple of weeks and then yeah and then come back yeah and then everything would be loved up again well yeah take a bit of time but yeah oh. 
but yeah, then when I found out later on, yeah, that he was dating other people, but I suppose it is his way of, yeah, breaking up so he didn't feel guilty or whatever. So yeah, that's a different way of, that's a different take on it. Right, okay. Okay, yeah, that is a different take on it completely. Um, <laughs> and why would, well, why why would, why would, oh, we've got some men coming in now. Why would, why would someone do that? That doesn't make any sense to me. Good evening, Mr. Burton is here. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us, Yvonne. Yes. You say, you say it don't make sense to you, but they got some men that because going back to the part where we were talking earlier about being kinky and stuff, they got some men that where you don't be a crab for them and whatever, they will probably leave you at home or as she as the lady they say, they will pick a noise with you just so that they can get up the house to go and get kinky with the person that really to let them perform whatever stills the water to do that the mother can't get to at home. Some men does that because some men know some men just be coming home and say, oh they love you but because but the people they will say oh you're boring but ain't that you boring is that you not accepting what they want to do like going back and going up to eat food and say you don't want to go their routes and they want to go their routes so they can go there to look for some person that can do those things to them. I see. So you know what? As you've just said that, it has prompted a memory of a client. It has. I have a client, um, and I don't have many male clients, so I don't really know how I'm going to say this. Right. So the male client is married, but male client has a fetish and wife doesn't know. And so male client has other women outside to satisfy that need and then goes back to wife just thought i'll just just drop that in and i'll expand on that just before the show i've just seen that we've got tony tony are you in um i just saw i swear i saw tony's name good evening tony cox are you there are you coming in the room or not shall i me jump in um Yes, as a, you know, with relationship, people don't get, don't um, be honest in relationship. There are a lot of people in a relationship that would risk losing a person that they want with somebody that they claim that they don't want. So they will be at home with somebody that they claim they want, but cheat on somebody that they don't want. And in relationship, as I said, it is good for people to talk about things right for me as long as it's not something to destroy my body or hurt my body or gonna cause problems to my body i'm on it i'm on it so if you want me just to try and swing on a chandelier and make something happen up there i'll do it if you want to go in a field because some woman it is like sex get boring i i and that's why i haven't been in a relationship because i get bored and i used to cheat because i'm bored i'm like bored yeah, so some people get bored. And some women, it's like bed, the bedroom, the bedroom. They have garden. They have a kitchen counter. And you understand? So it, it is nothing like after a certain time in life, sex is the only thing left. You have the kids. You have the hard life. So good sex is not really. And, and good sex is how you feel about the person. It have nothing to do with the vagina and it have nothing to do with the penis. The penis could be huge if you don't know how to control your muscle. You ain't, that ain't gonna have no use to you. It could be small. You still have to know how to print it. You still have to know how to grab it. And you still have to know how to twist it. And you still have to put your foot up on the bed head. You still, but some women, they lay flat on the back as if the man is in a morgue and he feel, you know what, I love her, but I feel I'm sleeping with somebody dead. It's turned off. You understand? So sometimes you used to need to go out. If you love red, get something red. If he loves blue, twerk. it's like, oh gosh, they're boring. And then these men in some long, what they call it, long drawers. Like, some woman is no more attractive to the husband because he comes to bed in a long drawers and he, she's like, okay, then good night, honey. But she loves him but she don't find him attractive anymore. So I think it's more of knowing the person 
sex, people think talking about sex is something dirty or you're on it or no, sex is good. Once every week and three times on the weekend, it's good. And, and, and it let me think, even the other day I was thinking about King Solomon. King Solomon have a thousand wives. Men have some needs that we women don't really, but men can't be satisfied most of them. So let's be real. Men love sex. Yeah, for a man to stay and be faithful to one woman, trust me, that takes a lot. You understand? Because King Solomon was satisfying a thousand women, right? So he had urges and needs. So to me, talk to the person, get to know. And as I said, I'll try anything as long as it's not going to damage me. As long as nothing to damage <laughs> me, I'm on it. You understand? So if it's McDonald's, KFC, in the plane, at the home office, call me, we'll be there. Because it makes memory and it brings fire. And that's me anyway. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> and on that note, Shalomi has dropped the mic. <laughs> That's from Ruth Carter. She took the microphone. Veronica, come in. Veronica, come in. Then we're going to go to the men because we've heard, heard from many women tonight. We're going to hear from the men. Right, I just right. really, uh, That's right. Veronica. Yeah, I want to just respond to um, Desmond. Desmond Edwards. He, yeah. says, good he says, good evening. My ex-girlfriend used to create arguments to seek attention. Censored arguments has a well, fetish and fetish. Fetish. But I wanted to say before, when I say my comment, I also want to say women also create problems too to get out. So I don't want to say that it was a vice versa thing, not mm -hmm. only men, women too. So that's all I wanted to say. Brilliant. Thank you for that. And Desmond, if you are, if you are listening, we want you to jump on because we only got part of what you were saying. So good evening, men. I'm going to bring in Herbie because Herbie's new to the room. So Herbie, how are you? Let's... I might, might mute yeah, it. Oh, it now. Now. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying the, uh, the, the talk and the conversation. I'm very interested in Good, good. So, so, um. <laughs> come on, we, we want to hear from you guys because we're just talking like, you know, we've heard, you know, so what do you think about, you know, what's been said in the conversation? Right, there's quite a few bits. You have to, you have to, you have to put up the questions to me again. Or okay. some of the discussions to me. Okay, so some we, um, Okay, so I might have to put my, is everybody hearing all right? So I've got my headphones just in case there's some feedback. All right, so what we're, what we're saying, we're looking at relationships and how we are responding to one another when we're in, in a relationship. Most people here are single, right. but there are people who are in relationships and there are some married people here. And so yeah. one of the questions that I posed that just came randomly was um, how is it, could it be or is it possible that people, women and men, will cause arguments to bring about um, having, um, you know, because they want attention, so they'll, they'll start arguing for no reason at all just to, to bring about because they're not getting enough attention is that possible because what we're looking at is how uh, we react it when we become un unhappy in the relationship or you know do we have angry sex do you go to bed on mad or you know that kind of thing that's where we kind of moving so oh can you hear me okay yeah i can hear you yeah, that, 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 that happens. Um, I believe um, in relationships that, that happens all the time. Um, it's, it's a, for some men and women, or some men, it's, it's like a formula. Um, you know, it's a pattern. So they know that this is what they do and how it's going to end up. So sometimes they just, they, they use that pattern to get what they want. Um, in my opinion, not a good thing. Um, it's not healthy. Um, well, I won't say not healthy because it can be, it can be, it can be, it can be, it can be a little different, you know what I mean? It's a little different thing in it. Because if you're used to the same thing all the time, this could be something a little different. Um, but I wouldn't sort of like encourage it to be sort of like a habit, you know, something you're doing, you know, very frequent. But um, I don't see a problem with it as long as, um, 
you know, you both kind of, you know, either at the same time or the next day or something, kind of have a talk about it. Um, you need to talk about it and discuss kind of what's, what's, what's happened. Let me just come in there because I, what I wanted to also ask as well, because we were, there was a, a thing about BDSM that came up yeah. and fetishes. Mm -hmm. And the ladies were saying that they feel that it's best to have that conversation mm -hmm. very early in the conversation, uh, the, in the relationship, have that conversation really early to kind of ascertain what your likes and dislikes are sexually. Do you think that that's a good idea? Um, yeah, but from my own experience, yeah, the relationship, the sex relationship changes over the years. Um, they may have been something that's not been on your mind from the beginning and somehow you've just been introduced or you kind of feel just charting. It could be from watching a movie or hearing somebody's experience. Um, but yeah, but if you've been in if you've been if you've been in relationships before and you've been doing this, this is your thing, yeah, then I think it's it should be spoken about at the beginning. Um, and say like this is what I do, this is what I like. And um, depending on what your response is, because you might you, you may have a partner who said that they're not into that at all. They don't. They just want the straight thing. None of this fanciness. So you have to then have to decide. Well, what are you gonna do? Because um, to me, you're gonna have to have some negotiate, compromise, or you have to just leave it. Okay. Thank you for that. Diane says, yeah, it definitely does change overnight, over time. Oh, not overnight, over time even. Okay, thanks for that, Hubby. I'm going to go and jump on to Tony. Tony. Are you all right there? Because I can see Tony's munching. I don't I want you to finish. But you're right there. Okay, you're cool. You're more empty. All right. Coming in, Tony. How are you? Good evening, oh, ladies. Good evening, gentlemen. Good um, evening. We're going to need to mute because we've got feedback. You need to mute me. You need to mute me, Yvonne. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, hope you're all well. Hi, Veronica. Um, wow, that's an awful lot to unpack. Uh, very, I mean, the whole sex and relationships is just, wow. It's a subject that I don't think you've got enough time to cover in all honesty, because it changes from decade to decade. It changed from uh, generation to generation. Um, there's just so much, there's just so much. You know, if I was to compare myself at 20, 30, 40 and 50, um, they're four different eras. They're four completely different eras. And I'll touch on them very briefly without being too explicit. At 20, I was a virgin. I was still a virgin at 20. I was, I was a late bloomer, but I knew man who had about three, four pick me by them times. Three or four pick me by them times. Them same man there at 50, same age as me, 51, and now grandfathers, some maybe even pushing great grands. Um, at 30, wow. I had well developed into the play area. And it wasn't to say I was a playboy because I wasn't, but I was very sexually active. I was explorative in so many ways. And I'll give you a scenario that many might attribute, might be able to um, understand the holiday romance. You go on holiday, you're free, you're free of all inhibitions, you're drinking heavily and so, a lot of things will go on, yeah? Need I say any more? 30, I'm married. I got married on my 30th birthday. Woman I love, I think this is it. She's the one. Sex and me and this woman is fantastic, you know? And then you get married and boom! All of a sudden, yeah, that gave you a shock, didn't it, Yvonne? Um, that, that marriage, that wedding cake, is the killer of sexual relationships some people would say, because the minute we got the cake eaten, whee, after that honeymoon scenario, the sex nearly done. 
It was like, what? Whoa, whoa. Where's this woman that me and I was making love all over the place? You know, couldn't get out of each other's tongues and all sorts of rah, rah, rah. But anyway, it was, it was like, yeah, few and far between. What's happened? So we had a child. Um, and one could put my breakup of my first relationship, what I thought was post, uh, tr post, post, someone help me out with this one. Post maternal, per you know, the syndrome that comes on after having a baby. Someone help postnatal me out. Depression. Postnatal depression. Thank you very much. So lots of things occurred outside of sex um, between myself and my ex-wife, but postnatal depression was definitely on the cards. Um, there was definitely depression that was clin clinically proven. 40, met my new woman. She's amazing. She's, we're back on it again. Back on the bike. Sex everywhere. Fantastic. Um, 16 years we lasted. Good sex for probably 10 of those years. The last six, it was pretty much in decline. And then I'm on my fifties. Where am I at? Well, I'm not got anybody, so I'm not getting sex regularly, but I know I'm still capable. Yeah, I've had the snip. So I'm not going to be having children, but I know I can perform. So there's lots of different stages. Now, you know, they say this thing about the naughty 40s or the filthy 50s. Yeah. So again, going back to what Shalomi saying, different times, different women. The women in their 50s, some of them are thirsty. So if I was looking for casual sex with a white woman, I would be satisfied every night of the week. Guaranteed. Yeah, because on my, on my um, Tinder or whatever else, plenty of white women are like, yeah, yeah, you're lovely, you're lovely. Can I come and see you? I'm like, no, nah, sorry, what, not what I'm looking for, darling. Yeah? Black women, on the other hand, few and far between, cannot find one for love, no money. They come up like once in a blue moon. And first-hand experience tells me the difference between white women and black women. White women generally are seen to be far more uh, open-minded sexually. But not to say black women are not. But Generally, to men, black women are seen to be a little bit more closed. Trust me, I've come across some beautiful black sisters who have been freak of the week, yeah? Twerking girl and all that, yeah? Nobody twerks like a sister, yeah? So them white women who think that they got it going on, sorry, but you'll never be a sister in that department. However, Generally, and I'm generalizing, I'm not saying it's every woman, but black women to black men, we see you as a little bit more closed. And we see you as a little bit more of a challenge to do the things that the white women will just drop of a hat, just get involved with. Um, is, is that in your experience? Though? That's in my experience. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because I, I, I just want to interject there to say that, you know, I know that there, we, we do talk, all of us talk with generalizations. So I don't want anyone to kind of take anything personally. Absolutely. And um, know that when we are talking, we are talking from our own experiences, right? So, you know, we, because we're all big people here we can talk openly and um and express how we feel without trying to offend anybody all right so um but you know what tony i thank you for your for your honesty and you've kind of opened up kind of a different conversation that i think that we could go into next week 
and I really expand on that, really expand on that, because I think that what you're saying is in a lot of people's minds, black and white, I think there are a lot of people who talk about people with each other, but not openly in an open forum like this. So I think we could touch on that. We can explore that, um, that side of it um next week but I, i'm really i really appreciate your openness um telling us you know in the stages of of how you have been throughout your life as a man and you've definitely brought some testosterone to the energy here some male energy here so this is good and both both you and herbie which is good which is what i was asking for because i think it's important that we get the balance and we get the balance right Okay, so um, I'm going back on here. <laughs> Somebody, Tony, someone's addressed your, your, what you said, but from the viewpoint that they said, pick me. <laughs> That's what they put. They are, they are somebody's child. Maybe you have a pick me. Most men have children. I love them. Maybe I'll pick me out there looking for you. I don't know. But again, what we're saying is we're talking in general terms. All right. Let we don't want to offend anybody. So I'm just I'm just going to say that openly. So um, shall shall say keep the fire burning, do different things, speak to each other about likes and dislikes. I think I think what Tony has said is very true that relationships do change over time. I think um, Diana also said um, it, it's change. It does change over time. And it's down to us to keep the fires burning. Now we are of a certain age. Oh, if you've got a question. All right, I'll come in after, Tisha coming after me. We are all of a certain age and we are all kind of like going 40s to 50s we're all kind of like on that journey and so I know for each of us men and women our bodies change and they are changing at different times there are things that can you, you have muscle Tony's showing his muscles there's mine there you go right so 52 and right. never looks better okay Tony is a single man ladies he's promoting himself <laughs> but this is part of it this is part of it so i want to say for those of you who are on facebook and for those of you who are in the zoom room um if there is somebody apart from her because herbie's married i just want to get that out there if there if you like somebody please let them know and if you don't want to let them know personally you feel a bit shy you can message you know you can see their names you can see their names message have connection veronica's married as well have a connection have a conversation because this is what it's about this is what it's about tisha come in yeah so what i was going to say is yeah you know you mentioned about having that conversation of, about what um your potential partner might like when do you do that because again my experience it's been i feel it's too early to be talking about that it just makes me feel like they just want one thing just, yeah right. okay good question fantastic question um i would say this is my personal opinion let me think about it now <laughs> Look, my personal opinion is this that i think that it's it's good for us to talk about it early on in the relationship when i say early on i don't mean on the first date and i don't mean on the second date after a period of time let's get at least through three two to three months of dating sometimes the conversation comes up and it depends on your personality as well for me if i if i am honest and I'm sharing my life with you guys. If I'm honest, I'd rather know sooner rather than later. So I'm the type of person I will ask. I would just ask, you know, what I'm not talking, we're not talking about this to have sex, but what's your sexual preference? What 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 kind of things do you like? Because, you know, there are certain things for me that are um, I'm quite open. Let me put this way. I'm I'm quite open um, sexually. I'm quite open. However, there are some things that I would draw the line at, a couple of things, one or two things. Yeah, one or two things that I'll draw the line. At. So for me, I'm like, I'm getting out there, I wanna know what it is, what, I mean, I, you know, I'm, 
I am quite an open person. I'm going to say this because this is something that I have done, right? We passed a week, last week we said, there was a joke in terms of something was said and, you know, uh, I think somebody asked, what if the person's private parts are small and can't work? Was it, I think it was Veronica that said it, I don't know. But I know it came out. But I am the type of person, this is, oh, that's going to sound bad, but I have done in the past. I've asked a man, drop it, let me see. Tisha's like, oh, drop it, let me see. I want to see. What is it? You'll, go, you'll say, because... Hear this, and this is where I'm at. If a man is bold enough to say, yeah, I've got it going on and I can do it and I can help, I can hold it for long and I, I, I'm the person for you and I'm the, all of this stuff. If a man is going to, if a man is bold enough to say that to me, I'm bold enough to say, all right then, put your money where your mouth is, let's see. <laughs> That's me. I'm just telling you, because I'm that type. See, and I would uh, imagine from what Tony was talking about in certain times of, of, of black women that he's come across, I would imagine that he hasn't come across, I don't know, I'm gonna ask you, have you come across somebody like that of color that would do that? Just say, oh, you know, date and drop it, let me see. So has, has that question come to me? Come to you directly, Kaya, don't take off your shirt this evening. Is, Ladies, is, is it just off. me or is anybody else's place just roasting right now because today was a very hot day one of the hottest on record and my my flat is roasting I you can you see my tan i'm dark i've been out in the sun all day i'm hot anyway so yeah i was say are you sure that you're not roasting <laughs> I am, I am. i'm just playing with you i'm playing with you i'm playing with you yeah. Okay, so um, listen, th that conversation about what you are, what you do, that generally doesn't seem to come up. I'm, I'm trying to work out when I've ever, ever had a conversation with somebody and they've said, right, what are your sexual preferences? It never comes up. So I kind of uh, uh, kind of understand where Tichi is coming from in that it's a, it's a conversation that you're like, where does that conversation ever come up? Because I'm more likely to just chit chat, talk, talk, talk. And then, you know, listen, if you get into sexual innuendos and you're like, oh, you're quite fit, aren't you? Can you show me your muscles? Oh, yeah. Show me a few more, will you? Okay. You know, how many muscles do you want to see? And it gets like, you know, risque and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, well, what, what, what's your personality? I'm a bit flirtatious. I'm a bit... Um, you know, exuberant, uh, extrovert. And that allows me to be, you know, quite open sexually. Whereas some people, they might be a little bit more um, sort of insular. And therefore that conversation is, is you've got to pry that out of them, you know? So it's, I understand what you're saying, Yvonne, is like literally, okay, you're talking to a man and he's, and he's giving it the big and then you're like, okay, go on, let's have a look then. Mm -hmm. C'est la vie, all right? If you were talking to me, c'est la vie, I'm getting it out. Okay. But that's, that's just me. Um, um, and can I just say that most, most men would, I don't, yeah. but, but because, in my experience, let me get I mean, that, I don't want anyone to start shooting and, me and, down. And by the, by, the, by the sounds of it, most men get it out before you even ask. Well, this and is I'll another thing. I've never, I've never been that guy. That's it. I've never been yeah. that guy, but most, when I, every, every time you speak to a woman, you're like, oh, please don't be one of them dick fellas that's always going to be sending me dick pics. Like, but oh, I guess for men, we have, a collection of guys who are going to be sending out pictures of naked women. And then for women, you've got a collection of women who send out pictures of naked guys. So I think it works both ways, but the conversation of, you know, let's talk about our sexual preferences. I've never had that conversation. I've, I can never respond. I can never ever remember a woman saying, so, are you into threesomes? Uh, I've never heard a woman saying, are you into BDSM? 
I'd never heard a woman saying, um, can I stick a finger up your ass? You know, all the weird things that people, you know, tend to try and think as taboo subjects, generally they'll, they'll come up at some point in time, but I don't believe they ever come up in a conversation that says, right, let's talk about all these things and whether you fit in this one or I fit in that one. Okay, Tisha, come in. And I'll come back with you, And then below me, Tisha, below me. And then, yeah. before, on my, uh, my end, I, well, for me, it's always the men what start that conversation. That's the thing, that's the problem. I mean, it's good to understand what each other's uh, likes and whatever, but yeah, it seems to be too, well, for me, again, maybe because I look sexual or whatever, I don't know. They seem, that's what they want to they wanna know. It's too, uh, I think, sorry for, for cutting it. I think what happens is it's too early. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I have had the, the experience of, you know, okay, we're exchanging numbers and we're talking and all of a sudden I get this pornographic picture on my phone where I'm having to look at it in different angles and try to work out what it is, right? So, you know, I, I think that it's too early. Um, I think Val's trying to come in, but actually the room is closed now, really. Um, what's the time? We've only got like 15 minutes left to the end of the show. It's going really, really quickly, guys, really, really quickly. Um, we've got some Veronica, I know, um, Shalomi, come in quickly then. Veronica's got some um, parts to read out on the um, comments. Come in, Shalomi. I hear a lot of people talking about the size of the penis and all of that. Um, what a lot of women haven't, I don't think they even know it, right? Um, they said enough people would probably wouldn't even hear this before that they always say that ghetto girls have the wicked Islam, but ghetto girls don't have the wicked Islam. They know how to control their muscle. They know how to use the vagina and let it feel as if the man is having a oral sex, right? It's all about controlling your muscles. A man having a big penis doesn't mean he's, he have any use. Like he can just have a big thing and it's just okay. useless. Right? And I believe that great sex is about how you feel about the individual. I believe it doesn't matter if it's small, if it's big, if it's medium or whatever it is. It's about that feeling about the individual that makes love making and sex the in thing. Because some people thinking with, I don't know what, because sometimes I can't find the words, but um, I find out that a lot of men, they're just not growing up like me. I can be talking to a guy and I get so much penis in my inbox. I stop putting it on their page because Facebook keep on blocking me, right? But they think because they have a big penis, that's what every woman is after. And it's rather just turn off. Like, like you will know if a man interested in you, you'll go to a date a couple of times. His things start to stand up. It's it just natural. Because he feel about you, his thing, just any conversation, his thing going to get up. Sexual conversation goes in. It's just like talking to somebody and they start talking about sex. You, you have to know by this time after 40, how to deal with the thing, how to make things romantic. It's like, oh, you let them sexy, they look good for my shoulder. Yes, them look good on my hips too. You understand? It's a turn off. Mm -hmm. right so at the end of the day you have these big man talking about what can a woman do you are the one who have a problem we have something cannot dead you understand we have a hole and no matter where we go that hole remain you have to certain age you wake up and your boy don't wake up you understand we don't have a problem i always said if the hole is too big there's nothing as a big hole it just means that there's a ocean both can't go in ocean so therefore you just can't manage what the woman have so don't say the woman is too big you would never ever see a boat trying to cross an ocean it will sink so at the end of the day this is the thing yeah it's about controlling your body because bum scrum to a man think he has muscles and a big thing you can have a stinking mouth that's such an off understand so there is more to a relationship than having muscles um there are uh, um some people some guy i went out as i said i went on one date in 10 years i could smell this guy mouth across the table and i was like like yo but he had a nice car now he has a nice job he have the all but the guy have a stinking mouth 
You understand? So they are more to life than a big dick or a hard dick or, you understand? And it, it's, it's irritating. We are big women. We, don't, we have had so much dick. If a trailer should come, it, it wouldn't fit what most of us had. Like, we have had it, we, like, come on, come on now. This big, 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 you understand? It doesn't work. It's about connection, being able to speak to someone, being able to connect, being able to cuddle, being able to, you understand? This big dick and the big muscles, I, I have a bigger dick than most of these guys. You understand? So let's be honest. Come on, let's be honest, right? Okay, I'm done now. I'm not coming on. I'm done now for the night, yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, you're amazing. Thank you, darling. Thank you for your, your comments. The Facebook is going off here. Um, <laughs> Lorraine Bailey says, I dumped a guy because it was too big, even though he was perfect in every other way. Veronica, do you want to come in with some of these Look, comments? Um, they have a lolly. Lolly Bailey saying, I was asked before a first date if I'm a, if I'm into porn. I would like to know how she responded to that, what she did after, but then she went no further down. And she's the same person that says she dumped the person because he was too big. So mm -hmm. I was wanted to know, I wanted to know what she done, what she did when the individual asked her if she was into porn. <laughs> There's a lot of people here on the on, in Facebook that are actually agreeing with Shalomi um, yes. to a certain extent. There's a minimum, and the, Karen says there's a minimum and there's a maximum. Oh yeah, to the size. Barbara saying exactly, Shalomi, you've got to know how to use your tools, but the connection and how you feel for each other makes the sex great. So, okay. what what I'm trying to is what I'm trying to work out is how diff the differences between men and women. Listen, we've got let we've got like less than fifteen minutes left of the show. You know, we've ha we've had dropped the mic, Shalomi. You've dropped the mic several times tonight. Yeah, I need to get a golden mic every week and hand it to somebody who's <laughs> dropped the mic the most uh, with lyrics. I'm telling you, it's real talk. It's real talk. Imagine him, Dick, if him, imagine how him, <laughs> oh God, Kara say, imagine him, Dick, would smell it about him, malt stink. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot. Listen, don't rant with Shalomi. Easy, my girl. That was from Sheena. With the, the Desmond is saying to what she's saying, the connection between the two of them. Yeah. So De Desmond is also part of this conversation. Saying is to what she's saying, it's about the size and how you do oh, it. You do. I think. I think. You know, one of the things I'm I'm, I'm going to say, nothing bad, but I will say this to guys. And, and I'm sure the guys will come back with some kind of response or they may have something to say to the ladies. But I'm going to say this to the guys, that if you talk the talk and you are quite bullshy, it, it is quite a turn off. When, you, you know, because like there's some guy, uh, uh, you know, I'll do it until whenever I'm, I'm on it. That's not what we want to know. It's not. When, when you're young, when you're younger, 20s, 30s, yeah, <laughs> you have the little giggly thing. But once you get to a certain age, that kind of talk really doesn't cut it. And I think that it's something that we need to, in these conversations we need to have because it appears not everybody, but it appears that some men do not recognize this or understand that that is really not what we're looking for. We are looking more to feel secure, certain um, in our relationships. Okay, Tony, come in, because I see your hand, your hands up, come in. Okay, so I'm just going to address um, Lolly Bailey's comment about um, the porn thing. Um, so this is how it works on the male side. So this is going to break it down. Like if you didn't know this, this is how it works. Us guys have our networks. Yeah. So every guy, well, nearly every guy is in part of a number of groups with other friends, male friends only. 
So, you know, we do the male bonding thing. Yeah, we go away and we do stuff as boys. Yeah, we go on trips. Yeah, we go on stag weekends, stag, stag weeks. Yeah, and we do stuff that males only do, or you, you, you kind of assume it's male only, but it's not really only male only, but they're seen as more male pursuits. So for instance, frequenting strip bars is a male pursuit. Now I know there are women that go to strip bars. Yeah, so again, it's a generalization, but let's be honest, it's 90% men, probably 95% men that frequent strip bars, yeah? Most strip bars are women getting naked for men, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, occasionally um, the, the fellas come over from America, the big hunky fellas, and they come in, and they, they do their shows, and the girls go, woo, and they go, they go berserk, and the men do their stuff. But generally, if you go around any town, London has about at least 15, at least, 15 strip bars in London. You go down to Bournemouth, there's another four. Go down to Brighton, there's another three. Go, you know, wherever you go, strip bars. And it's a male pursuit because quite clearly they only have female strippers. There are male strippers and female strippers. They only have female strippers. So for men, we have this network of boys, that, the boys network. Yeah, and I'll tell you the typical example. When I was in my twenties, I used to hang around with footballers. And we used to go to strip clubs all the time. You know, the footballers, they got the money, they go to strip clubs, a couple of bottles of Dom, Dom Perignon, thank you very much. You know, 500 pound a bottle. They're happy with that, because that's like, you know, peanuts for them. And we get we get the strippers in. And it's like, they're all over the place. Money's flowing, you know, it's, it's raining, it's raining. And this is before the day, these are the times when we didn't even have that saying, it's raining, but we used to make it rain, so, so to speak. Now, even now, in my boys' network, we still got that guy, that one guy who's mad on porn, and he constantly serves us up a bucket load of naked bevies every day. And you're like, what is this guy on? Like, literally, I'm like, does he just spend all his time just looking up naked women to serve up his friends then? And every man has one of them friends, guaranteed. So I speak to my cousin in America, I say, have you got a friend who just serves you up porn 24 seven? And he's like, yeah, I've got one of them friends. Yeah, now that's just the way it is. Yeah, so we get, we get all this influence of porn. You can see in the, in the, in the, the sexualization of the female in rap videos, yeah? Yeah, you watch any rap video and all you've got is a guy going in a strip club, making it rain. Come on, make it rain, make it rain. You twerk and do your stuff. Get your bobby out in front of me. Yeah? So that's a male pursuit. Generally, you look at a, a female video, it's not the same thing. She might be having a, a man in a, in a room where they're having a, a, an encounter. If you check out any Little Kim video, she's got plenty of sexualized videos but she's not going in a club and got 20 men and going, go on, make it rain. She ain't about that life. So women generally don't have that, but guys do. That's part of our DNA. Yeah, we grow up and we kind of find out, you know what, we can go in certain places and there'll be girls aplenty. And that's how I grew up in my twenties. As I said, I was around a lot of footballers, a lot of actors, a lot of um, uh, athletes. And that's what we did. We went, out to places and literally if you walked in a, in, in, a, in a place and it wasn't six to one girl to man in a world don't forget we are living in a place which is seven to one women to men yeah seven women to every man in this country so quite frankly we should have our our, our pick You got to unmute, Yvonne. You got to unmute. You got to unmute. I forget myself. It Lolly saying, Lolly Bailey saying, send them my way. I'll strip and make it rain. <laughs> what she's saying. Anyway, so guys, we are coming up to the end of the show again, right? The show goes so quickly. Um, but 
I really want us to continue this conversation next week because uh, I think it's such a big subject. Yeah, <laughs> Diane Corsell saying the old nightclubs, and I will absolutely, that's it. exactly. I mean, things have changed. Dating has changed. How we meet people has changed now and we're having to adapt and but what i recognize is that some of us haven't changed like the the porn and all of that that's been going on from 20s 30s into the 40s into the 50s you know and uh and some men are making it rain all by themselves with yeah. you know, as they're banging the bishop but that's as it is you know <laughs> God, did you say that? Yes, I did say that. Yeah, so what we want to do is we want to explore this even more. We want to continue, continue, continue. Before we go, I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Um, now, I also want to let you know that an offer has come to me to make this show into a TV show. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing, Tony. Yeah, I've had an offer. I've had an offer. So I am considering it. I am considering it and considering it to have a, a rolling panel. Um, so I want you guys to think about that. If you would be interested because you know what? This is our show. This is our show. We do this show together. It's for us. It's for us in the panel and for you guys on Facebook. And so it's something that I have to consider for not just for myself as a career move, which is fantastic, but also because this is our show and this is our learning. Um, this is our learning space and this is how we're growing together. So I just wanted to put that out there. Also, tomorrow at midday, I will be on Instagram. So if you have a dilemma um, that you want the dilemma answered, please um, come on to Instagram and um, I will be doing the dilemma half hour um, live on Instagram. So it's a new thing. So guys, um, please do support. And if you have any other questions, anything that you want to discuss here, let me know and we will bring it up in this in these sessions um but i do want to thank you i want to thank the men for coming in when you did um tony and herbie thank you so much for this evening thank you for your honesty and your openness and ladies again thank you so much for being open and honest shalomi you 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 are the golden mic person i'm gonna have to my my grandson has a golden mic so I'm going to have to get a golden mic so that each week somebody gets it. OK, guys, um, those of you who are on the WW, I hope you have enjoyed the show today. We will be back here next week between the hours of 10 and midnight. And we will also be on Instagram tomorrow at 12 o'clock on the L dot zone. It's the L dot zone. That's the Instagram page. Um, I will be there. So please look it up and um, follow follow like and share so in the meantime um oh barbara saying i'm up for being on the panel um travel for what you don't have to travel there's no travel because the panel will be exactly as it is here oh barbara uh, veronica saying no what's that you, you, you because you reading that that question about travel that is tony asking lolly if she does travel so lolly oh, is she so oh. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, Tony, because I didn't see that. <laughs> it was in your business. Sorry. No, she was advertising. She was advertising some services to make it rain. So I was like, okay, if you travel, we can we can do a little thing, yeah. <laughs> okay, listen, guys, listen. Guys. I want to thank you. This is what it's about. This is what it's about: creating friendships, getting on, having a laugh and also learning. I hope you guys have learned something today. We've, we've spoken about lots of different things, lots of different elements, but I do want to thank you for your openness, your honesty, and your transparency. So guys, um, I will see you here again next week. 
for after after dark conversations ciao my darlings ciao have a good week stay safe and don't forget tomorrow take care ciao for now ciao bye everyone bye, bye.